Hey, Mr. Parker here to review a movie for MVD. Uh, this is my first uh, Sean Weathers movie. I'd never seen any of his films. He uh, had made a couple. Uh, this film is uh, Lust for Vengeance. Uh, pretty cool name, right? But anyways, uh, it's supposed to be like your take on a... Uh, uh, he said it's in the beginning, it says this is the first official, the only uh, true American Giallo movie. I, I don't know about that. It's kind of difficult. I mean, it does have some, uh, obviously, inspirations from Giallos, but I noticed more so the plot structure is more like the film The Centerfold Girls, which basically follows, like, five girls, and uh, Andrew Prine is this killer, religious fanatic killer, and he crosses them off and hunts them down, and each story is how they are. And that's exactly what this film is like, except... Uh, it is also really exploitative. Uh, it kind of is basically all the girls were friends and they picked on somebody and now the killer's coming for them and each segment is and they cross off a list. It kind of goes backwards. And uh, each girl seems to have their own typical horrible problems. Not typical, I should say, anti-typical or completely untypical problems. One is uh, a bulimic and one is uh, like a drug whore. So yeah, basically what you get here is a whole bunch of explicit, I think it's real sex scenes. There's like five or six real sex scenes. Even at one point, there's a scene that comes out of nowhere. They're just one girl's worried about losing this guy she likes and the girl she's with is just like all of a sudden reaches over and starts kissing her and making her out and then there's a whole lesbian sex scene on a beach, explicit. So it's like, uh, I guess that's kind of a, like the typical, why the hell is this happening? Who gives a shit? There's nudity. You can break up with Chuck right now and start dating too much time in him. If I were to break up with Brent and start dating someone else, I'd damn near be 30 before I invested enough time with someone else to equal how long me and Brent have been together. It's not worth it to me. I've got too many other things to focus on, like my career. Now that's stress. That, that kind of is it. And another thing, it's like a giallo film in the colors. It does a lot of color tints. You know, they did that a lot in the 60s and 70s with the Italian horror films. Uh, especially, I'm thinking of what the French sex murders, even though I think that one actually was made, uh, produced by Dick Reynolds, the British guy. That had a lot of the inspiration there. Uh, a lot of the colors would change, if I remember correctly. It was like a tints and stuff. When people got killed, they would show them die in like seven different colors. I don't know why. But this film uh, tends to do that for certain scenes or certain colors. I thought that worked okay. I thought that visually it looked uh, the the video quality, the video camera they use was pretty awful. It's really hard to see what's going on sometimes. I, I don't know if it happened in uh, the editing process with the, the filters and everything like that over Word, but it was a little difficult to see. It was a no-budget film. Uh, it was probably made at a point, really. 2001, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if HD was too readily available for these people to make, but it definitely was not shot in HD, and it shows. Uh, it is aged, and it hasn't aged too well, but... Uh, there's a couple things in here you guys might enjoy. Uh, the, the gore and nudity, uh, the gore is not really so much there. I mean, there's not really that many special effects. It's more so like a breaking of the neck or something like that. Kind of more so iffy murders. But uh, if people like nudity, there's a ridiculous amount of nudity. There's a ridiculous amount of sex scenes in this film. It's almost like a porno where you get your five scenes and you're looking, oh, who's coming up next for the porno scene? It feels like that at points. A lot of explicit sex. Uh, a lot of drug use. See, if you were to look at, like, the tagline descriptions, you would see, like, a ridiculous amount of, like, exploitative things. You'd be like, heroin use, huh, prostitution, all sorts of crazy things. But uh, it's not nearly as uh, disturbing or as you would make it out. I mean, it, it's kind of just, like, a low-budget, like, kind of uh, inspired by Giallo movies. The killer looks like uh, the killer from Night School or Welcome to Spring Break. Uh, his name's Michael, and he escaped from, like, a mental, or escaped from mental institution. Ah, uh, you guys should know, or... The last they heard of him was from a mental institution. Jump, obviously, Halloween inspiration. And uh, even uh, there's a scene in there with the classic, uh, you think your friend's screwing with the lights off, but they're really getting murdered. Happens in Urban Legend. Happens in this. Hope I'm not spoiling too much. But uh, there's some cool features in there with the director talking about the film. The director seems like a pretty cool guy. Uh, it seems like he knows uh, 
well, he is interested big time in slasher films, enjoys his slasher films, and they said that he actually uh, locked himself in a room for a month and watched 100 Giallo films. I'm sure they all blended into one giant cocktail of insanity. But uh, this is uh, my review for Lust for Vengeance. If it sounds like uh, it's interesting, there will also be some clips in here that guys, I think that will uh, let you guys know if you're interested or not more so. But uh, that's the Sean Weathers movie, Lust for Vengeance. Uh, there you guys go. Have a good one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.